to the next year, you're muted. Ah, uh, yes, I just did it. Perfect. It's not enough that I have to protect myself from COVID-19. I must protect myself from the villains on the street. They walk on streets, dirty them, and act if they own the street. They pay no taxes like you and I do to keep the streets clean for jogging, walking. Worst thing they do, they attack us brutally anywhere. They burst in the car, attack, and sit on driver's seat. Mr. Contest Chair, honorable judges, guests, fellow Toastmasters, you wonder who are the villains on the street, Sula? Well, I'd like to share with you an incident that happened to me. Then I'll tell you who they are and their profile. On a beautiful morning, I was jogging. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a villain, a huge goose flew over my head, tangled her dirty feet in my hair, pulled a chunk off, left me a bald spot, and knocked me down. Immediately, I stood up and I grabbed this. She was ready to re-attack me, but I whack her rear end and run. I thought it was over, but looking back, ah, she was chasing me, determined to give me her second attack. But I gave her my second whack and I flew. When I made it home, I called the city to explain the incident. The man on the phone asked, is the bird dead? Of course not. And if it was, I wouldn't tell him the truth. I know how to lie. Then he gave me a lecture. This is T. Law protects geese. If you kill one, you'll be in jail for two years. Huh? And who protects me? To replace my hair and cover my bald spot. Politely, he said, this is the, no problem. You have a hair transplant. Since then, I'm not in good terms with the geese, the villains on the street. However, this incident taught me a lot of information. I've learned that when I jog on their territory, I must change directions. Imagine geese, the villains of the street, to boss me around. Furthermore, I researched on Google and I found their profile, which has two sides. One states, yes, are vicious, aggressive, fearless of people attacking people, bring down planes. They choose where to live and feel comfortable and where they hatch their eggs. They occupied our lawn without our permission. They pay no rent. We can evict them because law protects them. The other side of their profile states, yes, work as a team. And they can teach us a lot about teamwork. They create a V-shaped formation like that for their migration. It assists them to, to trap every bird in the team. If one lacks of energy to, to fly, they stop their tree. They can track the most energetic bird to, to lead their flock. Yes, support each other in their tough times. If one gets sick, two sit on its side until the sick bird recuperates. Yes, are loyal and they mate for life that's why they have no divorces in their community they can teach us one or two things about their 
relationship. They can help us to stop the divorces in our human world. If one of the, the partners dies, the other one lives in loneliness and refuses to mate again. Who does these things are our days? As we have learned that kids, besides their viciousness, aggressiveness, fearless of people, attacking people, bring down planes, they are blessed with valuable ethics, support, unity, rejuvenation, leadership, and loyalty. These qualities help them to live a blissful life in their world. As far as my incident, in addition to the information that taught me and presented to you, it taught me to forgive the aggressiveness of the, yes, the villains on the street and only respect their valuable ethics. Above all, it taught me to practice forgiveness to people who hurt me and left a pain in my heart. It helps me to go forward without anger or seeking revenge in my life path. How about you? Do you practice forgiveness to people who hurt you and left a pain in your heart? Does it help you? Forgiveness to go, to go forward in your life's path without anger or revenge in your life, Mr. Chair. Okay, man. Okay. Thank you, Tule. Okay. Bye. We will now have one minute of silence. Harris, can I just remind everyone to be on mute, please, uh, other than the uh, contest contestant? Sure, bad. <laughs> Great, I, I do hear someone's not muted. Okay, I think it's all good now. Thank you. Our second contestant is Emily Chen with her speech titled Healing Drug. Healing Drug, Emily Chen. Mr. Contest Chair, honored judges, most welcome guests, and fellow Toastmasters. In the wake of global pandemic, do you know which medicine serves the most other than COVID-19 treatments? Take a guess. No surprise. Anti-anxiety and depression surges a lot and reach record high. Unfortunately, I was among those people who had to subscribe this sort of medicine to kill my anxiety and depression 
last year. But today, I'm happy to tell you my symptom of anxiety and depression all gone. I'm going to share with you my three healing drugs tonight. Back to March 2020, when the coronavirus spread out globally, people had been ordered to work from home. Even our Toastmaster meetings had to change to online format. We had to stop going to the gym, prevent virus transmission, social distancing, so many things we haven't experienced before. All these sudden changes, plus my job security, really took a toll on me. I felt tired all the time. I couldn't sleep well at night. On the other hand, my appetite was significantly increased. I was dying for sweets. Give you an example. These Rocco candies, a bag at almost 800 grams. I could finish up in three weeks. Googled online, I learned I was in the midst of anxiety and depression. Got a doctor appointment, received my prescription. Before I left the doctor's office, I noticed his assistant, the girl who was at her age 30-something, looked a lot chubbier than what she did before. To show my care, I asked, when is the due day? She looked at me for a while. I'm not pregnant. After my apologies, I realized she learned cooking at home, keep baking at home. And she said, look, that's the result. We both laughed. She recommended the baking strategy to release stress. It works very well on me. And now we are baking buddies. Always share our photos of cookies and cakes. My number one healing drug is baking. Some of you may know last year, I moved to a new neighborhood. My next door neighbor's daughter got married in summer last year. They decided to have a backyard party after the wedding ceremony because of the limitation on the attendance of the wedding ceremony. So they gave me a heads up. The party will be loud. I congratulated them first. But I told them I wouldn't mind if the party could be finished 10 or 11. The party came quickly on a Saturday of August. A huge tent was set up. People started to arrive in the afternoon. The music was loud at daytime, but it turned down when it was dark. I went to bed at 11. Still could hear laughing, talking with light music right before midnight. It was suddenly quiet. I looked out of my window. A police car was there. Somebody called the police. Next day, my neighbors showed up in my front door holding a cake and they gave me a homemade cake plus a six months home workout certificate. Play your jam. It worked so good. Dance at home and it's free for six months. By the way, their son is going to get married this summer. I will keep you posted what gift I'm going to have this time. So my second strategy is work out at home. During 
this critical time, we are all suffering and struggling at a different level. The most, restricted, the most strategy hit me last year is I lost my mom. My mom had lived with me for the past several years in Toronto. She always came back to China for Chinese New Year, came back in March. She was pretty health, healthy at the age of 82. She even went to the gym for her aqua class once a week. I was expecting mom's return as usual last year until I got my sister's call on February 9th. My mom died of a sudden heart attack in China. But the worst thing is I couldn't attend her funeral because the novel coronavirus was so serious that time. Instead, I look after my mom's plant carefully. Now I'm having my mom's green thumb. Ladies and gentlemen, how do you deal with difficulty? If you have any difficulties, don't worry about it. Stay healthy, stay safe. One day, our life will be back to our right track. Mr. Chair. Thank you, Emily. We will now have one minute of silence. Our third contestant is Sadia Zafar with her speech titled, Consequences. Consequences, Sadia Zafar. Mr. Chair, welcome guests and fellow Toastmasters. Before I knew it, I was foaming at the mouth. Moments later, a blinding light came piercing into my eyes from a flashlight. This flashlight belonged to a medical technician who was towering over me with questions. He was roughly 5'9", with dark hair. My mind quickly raced to understand where I was, who was talking to me, and what had just happened. There was a hard surface beneath me, but what I did not know was exactly how I got here. Confused, I was now surrounded by three people. Tina was blonde with blue eyes. She looked really worried. 
We may have lost Sadia Zafar. So I'd like to um, quickly ask our Chief Judge Anne Hyde. Um, and should we proceed? Should we give? Should we proceed with um, the voting right now for Sadia Zafar? Um, Sadie is there. Um, does she want to start again? I don't know what the problem is. It with her okay. connection. Tell her to unmute. Sadie, Sadia, can you unmute? I just uh, don't see Sadia. Oh, okay, I see her here. here. Oh, perfect. Um, can I continue? Yes, please. Um, wait a minute. We have to discuss the timing. Uh, maybe, do you think it would, um, she should start again? Yeah, we could, uh, we could restart. Otherwise. Uh, yes, you should restart. I'm sorry, it wasn't my fault. No problem, Talia. Can I restart? Yes, please. Just before we restart so the we restart? Uh, timer, can you please reset the time? Paris, uh, I don't know. It seems that her connection is not stable, so we might run into the same issue again. I don't know if there is an option for her to dial in and use her phone for the audio. Just a quick suggestion here. Okay. Um, what we could do is, I think well, it might take a little bit of a time. Us? So what we'll do is, um, yeah, that's a great suggestion. So why don't we just try one more time? And then if we run into the issue, we could try dial in. Okay, so Sadia, so we're just gonna restart your speech. Uh, Sadia, so please go ahead. Mr. Chair, welcome guests and my fellow Toastmasters. Before I knew it, I was foaming at the mouth. Moments later, a blinding light came piercing into my eyes from a flashlight. This flashlight belonged to a medical technician who was towering over me with questions. He was roughly 5'9 with dark hair and narrow eyes. My mind quickly raced to understand where I was, who was talking to me, and what had just happened. There was a hard surface beneath me, but what I did not know was exactly how I got here. Confused, I was now surrounded by three people. Tina was blonde with blue eyes. She looked really worried about me. Paul, the emergency medical technician, was slim with a stethoscope between us as he led him, who was 5'7", with a silver stud in her nose. She unsure situation as Paul was examination. All three of them confirmed that I fell on the floor because of a seizure. I just had my first seizure in my own apartment at the hospital. Questions flew back and forth in my head. How?
Okay, so we do have, we're running into some technical difficulties with on Sadia's end. And so if that, she turns off her video, would that, is it because she's got a weak connection? And so the, what I would suggest here, uh, according to the contingencies document, um, we can have Baz and Sadia go into the breakout room and he can try to assist her. Is that okay, Baz? And you could try to help her to call in if that's what's gonna help for five minutes. And then we'll, uh, then we'll resume in five minutes. Baz? Sorry, Kate, yes, I was creating the uh, um... Room. I'll move Sadia there, and I'll. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, do you guys want to go with the last contestant until we? No. Okay. Uh, let's pause the contest for five minutes and see if you can go help her. Okay. Okay. Um, can the timer please time five minutes and put a red light on in ten minutes in five minutes, please? <laughs>
It's five minutes. I will go into the bedroom and bring them back. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Olu. And what is going to happen if this can't be resolved within the five minutes, we will then go on to the next speaker and they will still continue trying to work and uh, uh, she'll have another chance at the, at the end because this is pressurizing the, the other speakers. Yes, we're, we should continue with the contest. She's still having trouble. Okay. All right, our fourth contestant is David Godella with his speech titled, Returning to Happiness. Returning to Happiness, David Godella. Do you remember the last time you felt happy? For some of us, we're always having these negative feelings because we're surrounded with it. Mr. Toast, Mr. Contest Chair, most welcome guests and fellow Toastmasters. We live in a situation where negative feelings and issues come up every second. It's only a cell phone away to recognize what's happening. But what if I told you today and revealed the secrets to being happy again? Would you like to find out? Today is your lucky day. Now, before I reveal the secrets of happiness, I would like to share with you how I reach this conclusion. There was one day I was watching TV with my kids and I was not really with it at the time. I was not feeling happy at all. I saw the latest COVID-19 numbers and I just like, oh man. And it just so happened on the TV, there was this person putting his hand in ice cold water and all of a sudden, he made these weird, funny noises. We all laughed like we've never laughed before. <laughs> I tell you, it was hilarious. I wish you were there. And we actually fell off the couch. That's how funny it was. <laughs> now, on the way back up to the couch, I realized something. I was happy. You know, I realized that happiness is not that difficult to achieve. So here's my revelation of secret number one. Just smile. Do you know when you smile, you tell your brain to release endorphins, the happy hormone. And if you call in the next five minutes, we'll provide you with endorphins for free 99. That's right, free 99, plus shipping and handling. 
let's try it together. Let's actually do this through the power of Zoom. I would like you to think of something that got you upset, maybe stepping on a Lego piece designed to inflict pain on your soul. And then I'll ask you to stop and simply smile. Are you with me? Let's try this out. Ready? Go. Think about something that got you really upset. Oh my goodness, you should see the faces on Zoom right now. Your faces are perfect. Okay, now stop. Everybody, smile. That's right, you're on Podium Zoom. Awesome. Now, how do you feel? Are you a little bit happier? You see how cool that is? So the next time some negative emotions or feelings come into your mind, hey, just smile. Happiness is around the corner. Now, I got to be honest with you. Sometimes smiling is just not enough. So my second secret is laughter. Oh, let me tell you. Do you know when you laugh, it increases your oxygen and blood flow, which increases your endorphins, which makes you more happier. <laughs> oh, yes. I want you to experience that. So let's try this exercise again. Think about something that got you really upset. You know, like finding out that COVID-19 is going on and we're going to be in a lockdown extended. You know, that can get you really upset. Okay. Wow. Again, the faces. Amazing. Okay. Now, laugh really hard like you've heard the funniest joke in your entire life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, that is awesome. Now laugh have you laughed so hard that probably your cat looked at you and said i'm out of here and the third one is positive words you know what follow me and say this i know i can't hear you but i trust you life is awesome life is great life has meaning you know we need to have happiness. Life is too short. Let me show you something. I want you to think of this handkerchief, if I can get it out of my pocket, because it doesn't like to see people. And this handkerchief is the sadness and negative emotions. Well, next time you have negative emotions, put it in smile, laugh. And more importantly, think of positive words. And I promise you, happiness is around the corner. Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you, David. We will now have one minute silence.
our fifth contestant is Humayun Saidaipur with his speech titled, The Letter Unread. The Letter Unread, Humayun Saidaipur. Have you ever missed your childhood? I've experienced a lot. While on the occasion of my birthday, I remembered some gifts that I was given. I decided to look at them, which had been packed in boxes and kept in the basement. Mr. Contest Chair, respected judges, honored guests, and fellow Toastmasters. After 50 years, I was opening the boxes, fully dusty, marched by spiders, and sprinkling old memories. Each stuff carries a story box. What a wonderful, what a fanciful trip back to my childhood. While searching, I found a letter. I remembered it's a story that, that made me mad. An unread letter written by myself addressing my parents. The letter goes in this way. Mom and dad, nobody likes me. None of you and none of my grandparents. Nobody wants to be my friend. Let me share with you the story of this letter. My parents were very kind helpful, inspiring. They sent me to the best private school. They provided me whatever I needed, but they were too sensitive, highly caring for my safety. They never let me walk to a school alone. Once I begged them, Please, please let me walk to school alone. After they permitted, I walked to school happily. I had a good sense of independence. But as I was walking, I realized that they are chasing me in the stands. This made me mad. Then I wrote the letter. This letter was an eye opener. It could happen to any child. In order to find the reason and the remedy, I read many books about parenting. I found out there are a variety of behaviors, quite devastating, though unconscious and apparently good. There is a classification of parenting based on the level of parent control. That is a spectrum. At one end of the spectrum is neglectful parenting. And at the other end is helicopter parenting. Neglectful parenting, parents don't care. They never ask whether children need any help or not. Helicopter parenting. Parents are always flying over children's head like a helicopter. Children are monitored 24 seven. They are not allowed to do anything alone. Everything in their life is micromanaged by parents. Parents choose their friends. Parents choose their hobbies. The two end, 
bring bitter feeling and have a profound negative effect on children. These children are more susceptible to anxiety, to lack feeling of lack of self-confidence, lack of self-esteem, and feeling of not, of not being loved by others. To remedy, avoiding two ends, through being moderate, choosing permissive parenting, and unforced guiding. My experience shows that any kind parent without proper knowledge could make mistake. Isn't it better that we increase our knowledge about parenting before making such, as, such important decision of having a child? Fellow Toastmasters, raising a child without essential knowledge needed is like driving in a highway without driver's license. Ladies and gentlemen, please drive in the highway of parenting with essential knowledge and skills. Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you, Homayun. We will now have one minute of silence. Sergeant at Arms, do we have the status of uh, Sadia Zafar? Baz, we don't have your sound. I think Sadia is ready. I see her. Can you just give a thumbs up, Baz, if, if that's the case? Or send a message? Baz, we can't hear you. Is it good to go? We'll just wait till we hear from Bath. Harris, can you hear me? Yes, I can. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm having some audio issue. I'm trying to conference Sadia in, but um, I'm not able to do to do that so far. So 
our only option will be for Sadi to try again the same way she tried before and hope it works. So Sadi, if, if you hear me, then just uh, hang up from the uh, phone and uh, use your computer audio. Okay, so Sadi, are you ready? Sadi, you will need to unmute. Sadi is still muted. Perfect. All right, so our third contestant is back. It's Sadi as afar with her speech title, Consequences. Consequences, study as afar. Mr. Chair, welcome to guests and my fellow Toastmasters. Before I knew it, I was swarming at the mouth. Moments later, a blinding light came piercing into my eyes from a flashlight. This flashlight belonged to a medical technician who was towering over me with questions. He was roughly 5'9 with dark hair and narrow eyes. My mind quickly raced to understand where I was, who was talking to me, and what had just happened. There was a hard surface beneath me, but what I did not know was exactly how I got here. Confused, I was now surrounded by three people. Tina was blonde with blue eyes. She looked really worried about me. Paul, the emergency the medical technician was slim with a stethoscope between us as he listened to my chat. Becky was a redhead who was 5'7 with a silver stud in her nose. She made me a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, seeming unsure of her role in the situation. As Paul finished his examination, all three of these members confirmed that I had fell to the floor because of a seizure. I just had my first seizure in my own apartment. When I arrived at the hospital, questions flew back and forth happening now. From my prior research, seizures were common among people with cerebral palsy. Seizures are a sudden uncontrolled electrical disturbance in the brain. I would say that this is similar to a car that is, that is running out of gas and is sputtering down the highway. Now I am going to take you on a journey as to how it feels when I experience a seizure. Firstly, my brain spins wildly, which makes me feel dizzy. Secondly, my vision goes blurry, as if I am looking at the Hall of Mirrors at the Royal Ontario Museum. Now, I will mention how my body reacts. Have you ever been in a blender? I have. It 
it feels as if my whole body is shaking out of control. As I laid on the floor, I hoped that my seizure would not take away everything that I had worked so hard for. I had no idea how wrong I was. In the weeks that followed, everything started to unreveal. My independence was in jeopardy and there was persistent talk from my supervisors sending me back home. At this point, my confidence was shattered. How was I going to explain to my parents that I was coming home? They had so many questions, questions I did not have answers to. All I knew was that life for me would be very different now as I had to navigate between accepting help from my parents one, once again and, and or hanging on to my own independence. As I reflect on this experience, I recognize that my confidence was shaken and my failure to recover from the lack of confidence left me with unimaginable consequences. I lost an apartment, the validation of my parents, and my own self-respect. I lost sight of my goal and it cost me everything that mattered. My fellow Toastmasters, your voice needs to be the strongest in the room. Failing to listen to it will cost you everything, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sadia. You will now have one minute of silence. Is one minute. Thank you, Olu. We will remain silent until Chief Judge collects all ballots.
chief judge is still collecting all the ballots, please remain in silence.
Sergeant at Arms, Bass. Can we proceed to the next session of the of our contest? Sure, sorry, what's, what should I do? Is the Chief of Judge, uh, has she left the room? Yes. Fantastic. That means she has all the ballots and she is now counting and uh, and seeing who, who, are, who are the winners. So that concludes the 2021 Podium Club International Speech Contest. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give our contestants a round of applause. I would like to ask some questions to, uh, to our contestants as we wait for the results. I hear it, see. Sula. Sula, how long are you with Podium Toastmasters? Sula, you're muted. Sula, you'll have to unmute yourself. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Can you ask me the question again, please? Uh, how long are you with uh, Podium Toastmasters? Well, it's been a long time. It's over 20 years off and on. <laughs> I take a leave of absences for my other obligations. And then when I am away and I have sort of uh, difficulties to communicate or defend myself among my family, my friends, then I know to come back to podium to or Toastmasters because, because I do belong to other clubs also. So I must say that uh, uh, I always improve with the help of podium. Wow. That's, that's many, many years uh, here at Podium. So Sula, yes. I'm just wondering, what is, can you tell us um, some greatest benefit that you have gained um, from your experience at Toastmasters? Oh, that's a great question. Well, by being a member of Toastmasters, I opened my mouth because before I never did open my mouth due to the fact that I could not uh, understand English. My English was very poor, and uh, I was always hesitant to say anything. Even though my business required me to speak, still I was always uh, skeptical to open my mouth. So one, the most important thing was that Toastmasters helped me with uh, examples, friendship, uh, mm -hmm. help to achieve something that uh, helps me along my life. That's awesome. Thank you, Sula. Uh, and I see here David. David, who introduced you to Toastmasters and what made you join Podium? Ah, uh, um, Mr. Contest Chair, most welcome guest and fellow Toastmasters. What introduced me to Podium was a speech from uh, one of the public, uh, public speaking champions, um, Muhammad Katani, and um, it really got me interested in uh, competing in public speaking. I didn't even know there was such a thing at all. And um, I went on to uh, Toastmasters International, and Podium Toastmasters was the first place that was closest to me, and I gave him a call. And uh, Kate really helped me uh, and welcomed me to the uh, group and to the club. And I felt, um, you know, I, I need to do this um, and continue on. Um, and I've never looked back. Uh, I feel that Podium Toastmasters um, has helped me in my teaching career and also has given me uh, experience in leadership and also has paid off in my consulting business where I try to do public speaking 
and also uh, coaching. Um, because of this, I'm actually, I actually have a client in the UK, uh, in Ireland, actually, um, asking wow. about how to speak and how to do presentations. It's really cool. Uh, and that was not going to be available unless I became part of Toastmasters. And it's I just, it's the best, uh, best time of the week for me. That's fantastic, David. So I know I've been the past holiday parties. I've seen you doing some cool magic tricks. Have you really? Cards with your coins. Yeah. I was wondering, uh, do you have something, um, you know, just like how we at Toastmaster, we have this table topics, you know, you were just given a question and you had to do it. I'm wondering, do you have any magic that you can do to us? Yeah, a little impromptu magic trick, right? Uh, really? You know, uh, usually what happens, of course, when you're in any gathering, it's always important to have your keys, uh, your wallet, and uh, a deck of cards, uh, just in case uh, a situation comes up. And I, I like to carry this deck with me, and it's uh, you're ready. Very, wow. very helpful, <laughs> and it's nice to see. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about, actually, uh, you know, superpowers. Everybody loves superpowers. If you ask somebody on the street and they says, what would you be? Or what's would your superpower be? You know, you get the typical answers, powerful, you know, seeing through objects. At that point, I really kind of stopped the conversation because that's kind of scary. But what happens is now I always ask this or I get a usual response. Well, if I read somebody's mind, that would have been amazing. And I'm going to be able to demonstrate that everyone has that ability and will have the entire audience participate in that. But for now, Harris, I'm going to show you some, uh, some cards and basically you're gonna tell me to stop. Now I'm not going okay. to look at these cards at all and hopefully the camera will pick up the cards. And when you tell me to stop, I want everybody to memorize that card, but don't tell me, this is important. Don't tell me or ruin the trick. All right, so we all okay with that? All right, yeah. So, so here's the cards. I'm not looking at all. Just tell me when to stop. Hopefully not before the end of the deck now. <laughs> stop. Thank you. Okay, now take a look at this card. Does mm -hmm. everybody see that card? All right? Now remember, yeah. don't tell me the card. Hopefully you can see it. All right, and I'm gonna put it back in the deck and now I'm gonna look at everybody. Now, what's important here is that you're going to help me tell me the card. And the way you're going to do that is everybody, without saying a word, just in your mind, send me your card, the card that you just saw on the screen. Bring it to me. Let me feel it. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on a second. This is going to be interesting. Oh, oh boy. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of cards here. 52 chances, right? Okay. I think, I think I got it. Okay, let's see what's going to happen now. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this card to the top because that's where usually the fun part happens. Nothing, nothing in the middle or the bottom or anywhere. No, it's actually on the top. And what's interesting is what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say superpower. And I don't know if you felt it or anything, but um, I'm going to try to do this. Now, sometimes... I have to admit early on, right now, sometimes the signals get crossed a little bit, right? Uh, so let's see, I'm just gonna show it to the screen, right? Is that the car? The two of hearts. No? Close, close, close. Off, huh? All right, now hang on a second. I know what's going on. And you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, tell this card enough is enough already, all right? So you okay. need to change right now, okay? So I want you to pay attention right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slap the heart right out of there. And with two minus one, what do you think that is? One, right? The yes. eight of hearts, which Whoa. is your card. That's the power that we all have, Mr. Contest Chair. That's, uh, that was pretty impressive, David. Thank you. You have, uh, you have I didn't know that you carry your cards even while you're given competing in the international speech contest. Anywhere you go, uh, in public or online. Your that's wallet, quite impressive. your keys, and your cards. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you. All right. I see here Emily. Emily. 
So Emily, I never really competed in any contest, and I'm wondering, you know, it was pretty nice chair today for me. This contest, like I wasn't actively participating as a speaker, I could, I could, I could feel the, um, you know, the intensity of that to prepare the speech and deliver it. So can you give us some kind of guidance uh, to new Toastmasters uh, concerning contest? Mr. Chair, uh, thank you for the question. I do like to share my personal experience with all of our members and guests. So for me, uh, this is not my first time to participate in Podium's Club uh, International Speech Contest. I think the best way is, like people always say, practice and practice and practice. The thing is, try to finish up your speech, your script, as early as possible. So I supposed to do at least two weeks ago, but I postponed to a week ago, but later, just a few days ago, I finished up my speech. I think wow. I could be a better job if I could be um, like uh, take early uh, action to prepare the speech. So this time I don't feel I'm, I've done a, a good job uh, to my expectation. I'm going to redo it again in our uh, regular club, club meeting in the future. Thank you, Emily. And I see here we have uh, Homoyun. Homoyun, what time is it there? Now? Now it's yes. 5, 5, 10 a.m. 5, 10 a.m. Ladies and gentlemen, Homoyun is giving speech from Iran. And uh, when he joined, it was three o'clock when I was giving him a brief and and that is, that is dedication that some of the members put in. And, um, and so Humayun, I'm, I'm wondering what brought you to Toastmasters? Who introduced you to Toastmasters? And, uh, um, and can you walk us through what made you to decide to join Podium? Mr. Contest Chair, it was during the early years that I came to Canada, I was thinking to find the way in order to improve my English language. I, I didn't think at that time about improving my speaking skills. I found Toastmasters in the internet. One of the first clubs that I went to see what's happening there was Podium. And when I went, went there, I realized it is what I want. Thank you, Mayun. And we got Sadia here. Sadia. Can you hear us, Sadia? Yes, go ahead. Sadia, what's, uh, what's your greatest benefit that you gained from your experience at Toastmasters? Uh, Mr. Chair and fellow Toastmasters, there have been many uh, benefits that I've gained. A um, couple of them being that public speaking was a real problem for myself so I uh, when this was suggested to me through a mentor I had taken several years to consider whether I should or shouldn't but then here I am and here's a friendly team who's supporting me and I'm willing to last as long as it goes Mr. Chair. Thank you, Sadia. Ladies and gentlemen, let's again give us give a round of applause to our contestants. Well, we're still waiting for our chief judge to arrive. So I just heard from our Sergeant at Arms, Kate Posner, that it might take several more minutes. So I came prepared. I'm thinking maybe we could do some table topics. Anyone in the mood for table topics? Do we have the results? Just put a thumbs up so I can see how many people are interested. All right, I see some, a lot of thumbs up. Fantastic. So what I have here is just a few changes, coins. These coins have the year they're manufactured. 
So basically, I'll just pick some random coins and I'll pick someone um, from here and just talk about something that happened to you in that year. 2010, something happened in 2010. I hope you're not going to get anything 1935 or 45, um, but we'll see. So anyone, anyone who would like to go first? If you have the 1945, start with Gord. <laughs> All right. Does anyone? Uh, um, well, since I, I heard Gord's name. Oh, there you go. I, I see Bash. All right, Bash. I got a 25 cents coin for you. 2013. 2013. Mr. Contest Chair, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. You said 2013, right? That's correct. 2013, by, uh, by 2013, it was our third year in Canada. I, uh, I still remember some of my feelings that I'm, I'm still trying to adapt to the new environment. Uh, my family joined me a few months ago, so I came first and then they followed me. Uh, after that. So there was a lot of adjustment, um, but there were so many positive things. So work was going well. Um, life in general was well. So there is nothing in specific that strikes me in 2013. But now if I compare anything to 2020, it was hell of an amazing year. Mr. Contest Chair. Okay. Gold, would you like to go? Harris, I see some guests that may want to give it a try while we're waiting. I'm happy to come in a little later, but I thought oh, I'd sure. hand, hands up for some guests and they could give it a go. Any guests would like to go? Slobodan, all right, let's get you something. Here you go. Oh, you got a US, uh, US coin here. Let's try to figure out where the year is. Okay. Oh, 1974. Uh, Mr. Chair, fellow Toastmasters, uh, fellow guests, um, 1974, I wasn't born, <laughs> but it's good to be back uh, to see this uh, meeting. Uh, that it's good to see that it, it keeps going in spite of the uh, COVID pandemic. And uh, interestingly, um, it's been exactly a year since I gave my last speech and I actually participated at uh, last year's uh, speech contest. And then I was supposed to take on a role in February but um, I'm not sure what happened. I was, I think, at work. I can't remember. But I didn't show up for that. And then I got a call from uh, uh, Marie, I believe. I'm not sure if she's still with the club. Mm -hmm. And um, and then I, I was going to say to her, well, I don't know if we're going to meet again because there's this COVID pandemic uh, happening now. But then we just ended the call. And then that was that was the last time we spoke. And that was the last meeting. So back to you, Mr. Mr. Chair. <laughs> Thank you, Slobodan. Do you have any other guests who would like to participate? Or else I get to pick you, pick your name. Okay, so let's see who is here. Maybe uh, Peggy, would you like to go? You listen up? Sure. Okay. All right. Let's try it out. Let's see here. Okay, 2016. 2016. Let's see. Um, in 2016, um, actually, I need to start with. Um, this is my first meeting. I need to start with um, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. In 2016, I was uh, studying in university. Actually, I was uh, doing my specialist in French and a minor in biology. So I was studying really hard for that and I was working uh, until late at night. So 
that was 2016, and I'm graduated, so. <laughs> that was good. All right, back to you, Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you, Peggy. I'm wondering if any of the guests would like to go. I see Christina. Mr. Chair. Yep. Sorry to interrupt, but the uh, Chief Judge has the results. Fantastic. So you All can right. go. You're going to go into a room with the Chief Judge. Okay. So Baz, can you invite the contest chair into the breakout room with Anne? We can't hear you, Anne. I'm in the main room now. So if we, if Baz and I, if um, Harass and I can go to the breakout room. We'll do. Hopefully it will just take a few seconds and they will be back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have the results here. We have uh, one disqualification due to, uh, due to overtime. Other than that, I would like to now announce the third place winner. The third place of this contest is Sadia Zafar. And the second place goes to Homayun Saidaipur. Homayun Saidaipur is our second place winner. All right, here we go. And the winner of today's 2021 podium international speaking competition is David Gadella. David Gadella. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Wow. Congratulations to oh, all winners. Goodness. Thank you so much. Wow. And uh, I would like to now say that this contest is possible thanks to many individuals who actually put, who came over the weekends um, to help out and come as a team to do it. So I would like to now acknowledge our ballot counters, Sanaz Kinani and Carol Leo Zhu. 
Timers, Ola Tuzin, Akindran, and Elida Bunyard, and Sergeant at Arms, Basim Al Ali, and Kate Posner. And I would like to also give a special thanks to Kate Posner for helping me out with all the chair scripts, as this is my first time doing. So, again, thank you to all our winners and all the officials. Well done, to Congratulations. Everybody. This is the first time we held our competition online and you guys made it look like we are pros and experts. And I uh, hope I will uh, carry podium well into the area competition. And thank you so much for your support through all these years. And I hope I've inspired you and I hope you're feeling happy like I am. <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it was a fabulous contest. And I thoroughly enjoyed being the International Speak Contest Chair today. I hope you enjoyed it too. The meeting is now adjourned. Any comments, please, you can send them to my email. <laughs> I'll greatly appreciate any feedback. Could we hear from our guests? Pardon, Gord? Our guests, our guests may have comments. Maybe they should be invited to speak. Yeah, sure. Let me see here our guests. I'm trying to, let me go in speaker mode. So I see here, Christina Matthew. Christina Matthew, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, Harris, this is Christina. I'm your area director for the club. For area 35, I really, uh, really, I want to give you a big thanks for organizing this speech contest. Um, thank you, Kate, for inviting me to the meeting. It was really well organized and everything was on point. It felt like actually we were having a meeting in person in our speech contest. Everything was well organized. Hats off to the whole team. Thank you, Christina. And I'd like to now call Danny Chapaz. Danny, do you have uh, a few words for us? Yeah, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for having us here. Uh, I am from LCIT Toastmasters Club. I am here to see how the club contest takes place online. And I kind of have a clear idea, idea right now for our contest happening this Thursday. So thank you so much. I love the speeches. I loved uh, I loved how the whole the how the whole contest was conducted. A lot of learning. And it was always, it's all, as always, it's always exciting to learn something new. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Do we have any other guests who would like to go? Slobodan? Slobodan? Uh, Mr. Chair, fellow Postmasters, fellow guests. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I always enjoy attending a Toastmasters meeting and I didn't know how this uh, is working out. I was really, really curious to see it. Um, I really wanted, to, like I, I miss Toastmasters, so I really wanted to get back to it. And I, I really enjoyed the speeches uh, and particularly Humayun's speech um, because um, I have a little daughter and I try sometimes to impose my agenda on her and I know it's not healthy, especially now with uh, the online learning, it's horrible. And she doesn't want to stay in front of a computer because she's just four years old. And I tried to argue with her, but it doesn't work. So it's, it's, it's a good speech. It just reminds us that we need to back off and you know, let uh, children develop something on, on their own pace. Uh, back to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Slobodan. I think Peggy is one of our guests. Peggy? Peggy is actually an, our new member. So go ahead, oh. Peggy, if you want to say anything. Oh, I just, this is, my, <laughs> I just joined and this is my first official meeting as a member. And it was very inspiring, I find. It's, it's really inspiring to hear the stories that everyone had to share and just to see how everyone has benefited from Toastmasters. So it just comes to show how um, the club is close-knit community and also how how much uh, we've all grown 
throughout our journey with Toastmasters. Okay, back to you, Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you, Peggy. Any other questions? I have a, a point, an announcement. Um, because our area has so few clubs in it, um, we get to send our first and second place speakers to the next level of contest. So we, often it's just the first place, but it will be the first and second place speakers continuing to the area level in February. Fantastic. We got two podium members. And if you have no other questions, I'll agenda meeting. Thank you, everyone. The after party starts. <laughs> Congratulations, winners. <laughs> well done, everyone. Thank you. Well done, Kate and everybody. This is awesome. Well done, guys. I know we had some hiccups, but we did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. we did it. We it. I would like to ask something to David. Yes. In relation with uh, the cards. Yeah. <laughs> You didn't show us the whole deck. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the magic. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it is a normal 52 card playing deck. <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. Yeah, it, you know, and I really we like trust it. you. Yeah. 